Welcome to St. Mary's Parish Church. We have a service for you with all sorts of different things happening. Kind of usual, but maybe a little bit different today. We'll see. Here is an opening prayer for us. Father God, we thank you for each one of us, wherever we may be. Thank you that you know each of us by name and have called each of us to walk with you. We say that we are dependent on you and our trust is in you completely. As we surrender ourselves in adoration, we ask that you would come by your Holy Spirit and inspire our hearts today. Come fill our lives with your love. Fill our conversations with your grace and truth. Fill this service with your presence. We ask this for your glory and your praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I asked God. I asked God to take away my habit. God said no. It is not for me to take away, but for you to give up. I asked God to grant me patience. God said no. Patience is a byproduct of tribulations. It isn't granted, it is learned. I asked God to give me happiness. God said no. I give you blessings. Happiness is up to you. I asked God to spare me pain. God said no. Suffering draws you apart from worldly cares and brings you closer to me. 
I ask God to make my spirit grow. God said no. You must grow on your own, but I will prune you to make you fruitful. I ask God for all things that I might enjoy life. God said no. I will give you life so that you may enjoy all things. I ask God to help me love others as much as he loves me. God said, ah, finally you have the idea. And so to our sermon for this morning. Remember, we are in a sermon series entitled Overcoming, Overcoming the Problems that We Have in Life. And today we're looking at a particular overcomer. It's a question of Job, that character from the Old Testament who overcame difficulties. <clears throat> Pardon me, the book of Job is all about conversations. Conversations between Job and his friends and about Job's predicaments in life. Here's a Bible reading from the book of Job. Can you fathom the mysteries of God? Can you probe the limits of the Almighty? They are higher than the heavens above. What can you do? They are deeper than the depths below. What can you know? Their measure is longer than the earth and wider than the sea. What you know, I also know. I am not inferior to you, but as I, I desire to speak to the Almighty and to argue my case with God. You, however, smear me with lies. You are worthless physicians, all of you. Listen carefully to what I say. Let my words ring in your ears. Now that I have prepared my case, I know I will be vindicated. Well, that's a sample of the conversations that go on in the book of Job between he and his friends and he and his God. What's the context, context and background to this conversation? <clears throat> Job is a man who lived in ancient times among, around the time of Abraham and Moses. He was considered the greatest man amongst all the peoples of the East. He had a large family and large and prosperous homestead, but his greatness was in his moral and spiritual qualities. He was the priest of his family, which means he was the spiritual leader of his family, his servants and the whole community. He was considered a leader amongst the tribes and families in his region. Job was a significant man in every sense. I suppose you can see in Job the qualities that early kings would have. He was perhaps a king in the making. So then, a man amongst men, upright and strong, God-fearing and wise. Just the sort of man that the devil would want to have a go at. And so we enter the realms of spiritual warfare. Who are the people involved in this conversation? <coughs> the two characters are Job and his friend Zophar. At the beginning of the book of Job, there is a conversation between God and Satan. Satan challenges God to let Job suffer and to see if his faith in God will remain intact. So God allows Job to endure all manner of suffering. His family is slain. His livestock is taken from him. He suffers plagues and illnesses. And his three friends, Zophar, Eliphaz and Bildad, come to him and engage in a long debate over the reasons for his ill fortune. According to Zophar, who is the harshest critic among Job's friends, all of Job's problems must be of his own making. Zophar is one of those friends who love to score points off you. If there's a chance to ridicule you, puncture your self-image, belittle you, bully you, then the Zophars of this life will be ready to have a go at you. Do you know people like that? A summary 
of the conversation, Job's conversation with his friends goes back and forth with condemnation from Zohar and explanation by Job. Here we realize that this is not just a story of one man's plight. And Job was a real man who was written about by the prophet Ezekiel. But that the book of Job is like a huge dramatic poem describing mankind's condition and his relationship with God and the strength and the purpose of faith. At one point, Job says, keep silent and let me speak. Then let come to me what may. Though they slay me, yet will I hope in him. Indeed, this will turn out for my deliverance. Job refuses to see that God has forsaken him, but that through it all, if he keeps faith in God, he will be well and all will be well. And at the end of this saga, Job's fortunes are restored. The blessings he receives are greater than before all his troubles began. He has another family of seven sons and three daughters. He lives to a ripe old age and sees his descendants go before him. Sorry if I'm giving you a spoiler here. What would you feel if you were Job in this story? There you were a God-fearing person, a righteous person, and everything falls apart. Everything that is dear to you is taken from you. Of course, Job isn't perfect. He is but a mere man. His faith wavers in the face of this accusatory onslaught of his friends. He says at one point, my spirit is broken, my days are cut short. The grave awaits me. Surely mockers surround me. My eyes must dwell on their hostility. It would have been so tempting for him to give in, to say, okay, enough is enough. I'll give up on God. I'll turn away from him. Just let all these problems stop. But then Job's problems are very obvious ones, aren't they? Sometimes when the battle lines are clearly drawn, when it's a straightforward yes or no, when it is belief in God or belief in no God, it's easier to decide which way to turn, isn't it? The problems of faith we face are more often a lot more subtle than this. We might well trust God in the big things, what we believe in, where we live, who we marry, where we go to church. But do we trust God in the small things also? Do we spend time listening to other people's problems? How much time do we spend helping other people? How much do we give and to where and to whom? What should we watch or read? With whom should we speak when we're not with other Christians? How should we speak to them? When do we pray? All of those areas. What issues does the story have that are current issues for us today? <laughs> well, apart from the main theme of maintaining our faith in God through difficult times, and we know some about something about that, do we not? There's also the question of who do you turn to when you are low, when you are doubting God and doubting yourself or need answers to life's questions? Who do you turn to? We usually turn to a family member, don't we? Who might be well, have good experience and be uh, having good advice for us, or we usually turn to a friend who will have our best interests at heart. But do you turn to God in prayer and ask his advice? Do you turn to the word of God to see what the lessons of scripture have to say on the matter? Do you turn to a fellow Christian and ask them to pray with you? Job was a man who followed God's way for his life. For us, as Christ's followers, to follow in Christ's way is called discipleship. Are you going to be a disciple of Christ? Are you going to be a disciple of this world? Choice is yours each and every day. What changes in Job are there as a result of this conversation? Well, not only is Job's life restored following his suffering, but his faith is increased. 
And his life is enriched because of it. He says, I know that you can do all things. No plan of yours is thwarted. Have you ever had that experience of looking back over a period in your life and seeing more clearly how things unfolded? You grimace at some of the things you said and did at certain times. Maybe you have done some things differently in different ways. Maybe you were thankful that you got away with something. But the book of Job teaches us that all of life is a learning process. The bad times and the good times, if we learn from them, Job learned to give thanks to God in all things, even though his friend, Zophar, did his best to pull him down. Job said, now that I have prepared my case, I know I will be vindicated. Can anyone bring charges against me? That was how Job met with the disasters in his life. How are we going to meet with the disasters in ours? Amen. The inspiration for today's prayers comes from Archbishops Justin and Stevens. Pray for the nation. Prayer initiative for this time of pandemic. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. Let's pray together. Lord God, we lift to you all those we hold dear in our hearts praying for their health, hope and well-being. We pray that even when loved ones cannot physically be together, they would not feel apart. We ask for your help in communicating and in our caring. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for schools and colleges and for children and young people everywhere. Thank you for teachers and all those involved in shaping young lives. We pray that all might be nurtured and cared for, that all lives can flourish even in these difficult times, and no one will be overlooked. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the elderly, isolated and vulnerable. Father, in this prayer we know we are echoing your commitment to those most at risk, praying for their deliverance, protection and comfort. We also hold before you those who care for them, that they too would be strengthened and encouraged in this work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, in this time of great challenge, we pray for the economic well-being of our country. We remember those who face great uncertainty in their work. We lift before you those that have lost their jobs and face an uncertain future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the National Health Service and all key workers. Father, you are the great healer and the agent used more than any other is the NHS. Today, we voice our gratitude for those who serve this country in the NHS, that you, Lord, would prosper the work of their hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in positions of authority with responsibility for decision-making at national and local level. We ask that you would give our leaders great wisdom, judgment and a commitment to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring to you, Father, all those who suffer in body, mind and spirit or with grief. We ask that in your loving kindness, they might know of your sustaining presence amidst their pain. We pray for those that are stretched beyond their own capacity to cope, as we remain hopeful that in your love and grace, you will bring a sense of comfort, love and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's now close by sharing together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so we come to our blessing at the end of today's service. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers, for feeding us with your word and encouraging us in our virtual meeting together. Take us and use us, we pray, to love and serve you and all people in the power of your Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Stay safe, everyone. See you soon. Blessed be